Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is this heat pump. This is the inside of an outdoor heat pump, and we've removed the fan off the top of it so we can just see the components inside. This is an older R22 uh, reciprocating compressor. You can notice that just by the oval. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, examining each of the components in here and also the refrigerant flow in both heating and cooling. So we're going to go ahead and start in cooling mode first. And where we're going to start off is right on this suction line, which is the large line entering in. So we come over here, we come up through this large suction line. It's low pressure, low temperature, vapor refrigerant. And we come right into the reversing valve. We go through the reversing valve in cooling mode. This reversing valve will be powered uh, since this is actually a old carrier unit. Uh, we're going to have to power this in, in a cooling mode. So this uh, suction line is connected to then this pure suction line. This middle pipe on the reversing valve is pure suction. We're going to then continue to head over and into the accumulator. The accumulator's job is to make sure that only vapor refrigerant goes into the compressor and not any liquid refrigerant. So it also has liquid in the bottom of it and it meters the liquid in uh, the oil and liquid a little at a time into this suction line where it exits the accumulator at. So then this pipe, if you follow it, actually goes underneath all the rest of this piping right here. And then it comes back up over here and goes right into the compressor as a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant without any liquid going in. Then it comes out as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant out of the discharge line. It then goes through a muffler. So that's not a filter dryer, that's a muffler just to keep noise down and keep vibrations down. Then comes through this uh, line as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. Then it goes into the reversing valve. And then it goes across over to this large line, okay, right over here. And then it goes down. And then it comes across over here. So then this is high pressure, high temperature discharge gas, and it comes across, and then it goes into, on this one, three three-eighths lines right here, from the large line into three three-eighths lines. And then it goes into the outdoor quill right here, and then down here, and another spot down lower. So what it does then is it starts to reject heat at the outdoor quill right here in the quill. So then once it rejects enough heat, it turns into the saturated state where vapor and liquid both exist at the same time. That's where it's able to reject a lot of its heat at. So after that, it then turns into a complete liquid. And so it's then condensed. And the condensed liquid then lowers in temperature until it comes out of the outdoor coil through this distributor line, this distributor line, and this distributor line. So the temperature decrease in liquid form until it comes out of the outdoor unit is called the subcooling. So it goes through this metering device. This metering device is not presently active. It's actually bypassing through and around it. It then comes down through this uh, biflow copper spun filter dryer, and it comes down and comes to the liquid line. The liquid line then exits through that 3 8 line at the service valve on the outside of this outdoor heat pump. It then goes towards the indoor TXV as a subcooled liquid. You may not be able to see that pipe down there, you know, where the liquid line exits right here, okay? Uh, there's also one more line in the middle, in between the large vapor line, which is right here, the large vapor line, and in between that and the small 3 8 line, and this one right here is actually pure suction all the time because it's actually connected to this line right here. This is always pure suction, low pressure, low temperature vapor, and that usually has a Schrader valve on the outside of the outdoor heat pump, right in the middle. So this is your vapor line, this is your pure suction, and this is your liquid line. So I just wanted to give you an up-close view. This is your vapor line going to your vapor service valve on the outdoor unit. This is your pure suction line, and that's connecting straight to where it goes right into the inlet of the compressor and then this right here is your liquid line all right and that's connected to your service valve right on the outside of the outdoor unit now we're going to go ahead and take a look at heat mode so we have high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant comes in through that 3 8 line so it goes through the service valve on the outside of the heat pump it comes in it goes through this copper spun biflow filter dryer right here it then comes into the metering device as a high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant, and uh, it is also subcooled liquid refrigerant. 
So it hits the metering device and it lowers in pressure. Then it turns into a low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. It's about 80% liquid, 20% flash gas, and it goes through the distributor tubes into the outdoor coil, here, here, and then down at the other location where this third distributor tube is. It then enters into the outdoor coil as a low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant mainly, and it's then absorbing heat from the outside air. Once it absorbs enough heat, it turns into the saturated state where vapor and liquid both exist at the same time. And then once it absorbs enough heat uh, at the saturated state, it then turns into a complete vapor. Once it turns into a complete vapor, it then increases in temperature, and that's called the superheat, the temperature increase in vapor form. It then exits the outdoor coil here at this 3 8 line, at this one down here, and then one lower. So then it comes into this little header right here as a superheated vapor. So it's a low pressure, low temperature vapor that's superheated, comes through, comes underneath, and comes up right on this line on the reversing valve. This line then connects to the middle line, which is true suction, and it goes and enters into the accumulator. Once again, the accumulator's job is to make sure that only vapor gets to the compressor and no liquid. In this case, that could occur if this, if this coil, say, is frozen and uh, it just doesn't have uh, much heat to absorb, so it doesn't come out of the saturated state. So if, if you have a saturated uh, refrigerant where vapor and liquid both exist and it comes into this bottle, then only vapor is supposed to be able to come out because this tube right here, uh, it, it dips down into the liquid and the oil and then it comes back up and there's only vapor at the top here. So it sucks in vapor as well. At the bottom, there's a little metering device uh, and it allows a little oil and a, just a little bit of liquid refrigerant to come through. And uh, that phase changes into a vapor and then it comes through this, this pipe and heads right into the compressor. Unfortunately, in this case, we got to look, it comes underneath and down here and then goes into the compressor. We just can't see it, but basically it goes from here directly to here and then into the compressor as a low pressure, low temperature vapor refrigerant. And then it comes out as a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant, comes through the muffler once again, which reduces the noise and reduces the vibrations, then comes into the four-way valve, or also known as the reversing valve, and then it comes across over to here. Uh, and in this case, since this is a carrier unit, this one, this reversing valve is not powered right now. So when it's not powered, it's in heat mode. So that means that this pipe and this pipe will be connected. All right, so then it comes over here, through here. It's a high pressure, high temperature vapor refrigerant. It then comes through and out of the outdoor unit through the large line and it goes directly to the evaporator coil and starts rejecting heat there. So that's how it works. I hope that helps and I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.